Hello, this uh, design drawing tutorial is uh, all about shadows. When you're presenting your uh, final designs or any designs to your clients, uh, um, then you need to be thinking about how you're going to present those and uh, if you can present them in appealing and aesthetic way that um, communicates your ideas well, then that's a good idea. So um, we just want to teach you uh, the two types of shadows today. Um, they are a reflection of what uh, how shadows act in real life. Shadows are, are a magnificent thing um, and I hope that from these lessons you will also start looking at shadows and looking at lights and light sources and how shadows play out across uh, across our world um, because they're very very interesting um, and they have a set of rules that we uh, that we will follow. So there's some terms that we need to know. We're going to be talking about point sources of light, we're going to be talking about the seat, we're going to be talking about the sun's rays, uh, and some other terms like that and uh, will hopefully prove to you that these things are real and that they follow natural uh, natural knowledge that we can observe uh, observe in our world. So here's an example of how a computer is now generating. We, we often work in 3D now and this is a drawing from Fusion and it just automatically puts this shadow in because in our world shadows are there and so in th in our 3D world in our isometric and you know modeling world then shadows are starting to naturally appear there as well um, and the interesting thing is that uh, as I said shadows are not just uh, things that I'm making up for you they we can prove that they work okay so in this uh, example here you can see I've cut out a piece of cardboard in the shape of a H um, and I've cast a, a, a point source of light from behind it and you can see the shadow here and how from a point source of light it's very distorted and it comes out and you can just see under here a drawing that I've done uh, following the rules of uh, of shadows which we'll go through shortly here's another example uh, uh, just a random shape with a hole cut in it and you can see the point source of light you can see the distortion how it expands out across uh, across space and, uh, and and also a little bit of a drawing there. So here is the uh, more technical side of things in terms of you can see those drawings and you can see how uh, you know out here in in the shadow land it actually is a reflection of that and then here's my my piece in the corner. So I'll just have a quick look at those and then we'll go now to uh, actually showing you how to draw this. Okay, so we're going to start off with uh, some simple shadows um, from the sun's rays, okay? And we're going to draw this one here that I've, I've got on the screen and this one. And so we need to start off with, with a simple drawing that's got no shadow in it. And that will look like this. The first type of shadow that we'll look at, and I've drawn an isometric drawing here to start with, and it has some thickness. Um, the first type of shadow is going to be uh, from a, a uh, from the sun. Okay, so if, when when we consider that uh, rays of light are coming from the sun, uh, the sun is so big that we consider that they're parallel. So the sun's rays will just transfer down through all of these points and they will all be parallel. And we just decide uh, which angle the sun will be at. So if we decide the sun's gonna be at 45 degrees from the left, then it's gonna come in from here from 45 degrees. So just as in real life, if someone's standing up and the sun's behind them, it goes through their head um, and it just transfers down to the ground. So that's why these lines have been projected down. But then we need to understand that we need to go to the, to the seat, what we call the seat below the, sh the point with which we wish to project the shadow. We go to the seat and then we come across and then there's the shadow point of that point there. So we come from the point which we want to make the shadow to the seat and then across. Now, just as in real life, if something's in real life is going, you know, across here at 30 degrees, then in shadow land, it must also go across at the same angle. But I'm not going to quite line that in yet because I don't know what's happening at the back here. I've got the, I've got the back. So this shadow is going to come across up there, up there and along and back again. But I also have this back surface, which I have to construct a shadow from. So once again, I need to project down from the back. I need to come to the seat below the point, and then I need to transfer across. Now, that would be the shadow of this point here. However, it's inside. 
Now, if this one here joins to there in real life, then it must also join to there in real life in Shadowland. So at this point, we'll join to here. However, it's inside the drawing and it's inside another shadow. So when there's a line inside another shadow, you can't actually see it. Just like you can't see someone's nose, the shadow of someone's nose, if the sun's from behind there and it's behind their head and it's shading their whole, their whole, uh, you know, body on the surface. We probably will, however, see the surface of this back point. So I just need to find this back point over here. I need to find the seat there, and then I need to transfer it down at the correct angle. Okay, at 45 degrees. Then I need to go to the seat below that point, and then I need to just go across horizontal. So here is now the shadow for this point back here. So point A there must join to point B there. So in shadow land, point A must also join to point B. So that's gonna join across to there. And then just as in real life, this point would join back down to the back point if we were to draw hidden detail in there, this one will join across to there as well. So now we've got an idea of where this shadow is going to go. So we can line that in now because we know that all the other points are going to actually be inside. So we've drawn a technical drawing there and we've actually got the shadow drawn of this particular shape in 3D as if it was the sun coming from the left at 45 degrees. Now the next thing we do is we hold our pencil like this and we carefully start shading because the shadow is always shaded in. So we'll just rub that in there carefully, like this. And we should have probably um, rubbed out some of the um, construction lines before we, before we did that. And the other thing when you're working like this, what you can do is you can get your finger in here now and you can sort of rub that a little bit, which might give it a, a bit more, see how that's making that a little bit more consistent? I've got to do a little bit more in this corner here to just make that, uh, oh, well, I've gone a bit wrong there now. I'll have I lifted it up a bit too high. Um, so then we'll come back and we'll rub that out, uh, the construction lines out around it. And we might even sort of come in there close. We've gone over the lines there a little bit. You can see you have to have steady hands. And then there we've got a nice looking shadow uh, from the left at 45 degrees. Now this one's a little bit easier because uh, we've got, it's just, I haven't actually given this sort of window any thickness. So I've gone ahead and I've projected down at, uh, at the angle. This one times 45 degrees from the right. I go to the seat and I come across. So there's a shadow that's gonna transfer across like this here. It's going to come back there. It's gonna go down here joining on to the real point. And then, as I said before, if this one here is parallel, it's going to, you'll find the shadow, if you're constructing it accurately, it will also be parallel over here in, um, in Shadowland. So this point here, we need to go down, and then we need to come across from the seat. Remember that new term, the seat, and there's that point. And if it doesn't quite line up because you haven't been working accurately, you need to make those two lines look parallel. Because if they don't look parallel, then it's actually inaccurate. And it's probably the fact that you've been working inaccurately, not the fact that the shadow has suddenly become inaccurate. Now I'm gonna show you and prove to you why those things are like that. Because if I was to actually make uh, a point source of light, which we will do next, um, and cast the shadow, you'll see, um, you'll see how that happens. Okay, so I can go ahead now and I can finish that off and uh, I'll have another shadow, this time from the right at 45 degrees. Okay, on this drawing now, we've got a, uh, an example of a, of a point source of light. Now, on a point source of light, we set up the point source uh, uh, in a perspective sort of fashion, but we must have a seat. We must have a point on the ground below the point source of light. And technically, this is how we should show a point source of light. We put a dot with a little circle around it. So the point source might be certain distance behind and a certain distance above. 
We then do the exact the same rules that we do the other way. We must come from the point source with a visual ray, if you like, and we must transfer from there through the point with which we want to make the shadow, and then we must extend it down. But this time, though, we must come from, from the big base of that one and then through the base of this one, and then we extend that out. And then where the two lines intersect is the point which which we get the shadow. Okay, and so in this case, we have this shadow coming out here like this. And you can see from the point source of light, what we get is a very distorted looking shadow. And that's because it's coming from a particular point. And so as it casts through something, it really expands. And you can see that, you can see that from even the shadow of my finger here, uh, from, the, from the light at the back of my drawing. There's the shadow of that, of that eraser, okay? You can see how it, it becomes bigger. So it's a very interesting thing when you start engaging in making a point source of light for a shadow. So you can see from this drawing, once again, you come from the point source through the point with which you want to make the shadow and extend. You come to the seat below the light and then you come to the seat below the point and you, you transfer the line out, extend it until they cross. So there's a, a, a set of rules that you must follow when you're um, drawing shadows. And uh, these rules are made up, well, they're not made up, they're actually following real life. And um, I'll show you on the next picture uh, how that actually happens. So I hope you can see from this uh, tu drawing tutorial that shadows are not things that just act however they like. Um, that light uh, travels uh, in, in certain ways and it travels in straight lines if it's from, uh, from a point source and it, and it, and it uh, comes out from that, uh, radiates out from that point source of light. Or if it's coming from the sun's rays, we consider that it's parallel because the sun is so big that all the rays uh, just come parallel. And you can take a notice of that as you're uh, walking around and, and looking at different things in our world. So you can see from these two uh, pictures that I've taken here of shadows that they do relate very well to, uh, you know, and correspond to drawings. There's some slight difference there because of the actual point source of light, etc. But you can see that there's a, a, a high correlation value there. So I hope you uh, enjoy drawing some shadows. These are the, the sun's rays uh, shadows on this one, for example and uh, it's something that can really enhance your design drawing and, uh, and make it look great and so uh, you'll communicate your designs better. Okay, thank you.